But the big question is like, why the fuck does anybody care about this at all? Like, why are we even talking about this? Turns out there are some very good things. If you like Ethereum, the merge is a very good thing for you. Uh, and there's a few reasons for that. First, and this is actually good if you just are a person, if you're a human being, carbon emissions are going to go down. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but the world is getting hotter. Have you guys noticed oh, this uh, yeah, lately? A little bit, little bit I've been feeling. I don't know, I'm in Bangalore, yeah. so uh, I really can't feel a lot of heat. <laughs> but proof of work does have carbon emissions because you need that electricity. And proof of stake, you need 99.9% .9 less electricity. It also is good because it takes away one of the critiques that anti-blockchain people have, right? You might hear some critics be like, oh, it's so wasteful every time you mint an NFT. That goes away. Yeah. So that's good. The ETH issuance is going to drop dramatically. Uh, this is a, a little bit of a complicated subject, so I'll, I'll try to make it easy, right? Every day, ETH issues new ETH as rewards for the miners in a proof of work system, right? Right now, that those rewards are worth about $20 million a day. That's a lot of money that's going out of the system, right? And that is the price that Ethereum has to pay for security. Those are like the bribes that it gives to people around the world to come and secure the network by giving it electricity. In a proof of stake system, the bribes are much, much smaller because instead of having miners paying for electricity and then need to be rewarded for the cost of electricity plus their effort, now it's just a simple reward on its own. So it's going to go from an emission rate of 4.3% per year, that's basically inflation, down to 0.4%. So it's going down 90%. And that is really good for supply. And the emission rate? Uh, is high because in proof of work, all the machines have to fight against each other. There's a lot Correct. of work being done. Whereas in proof of stake, uh, there's a lot less effort in fighting with each other. So uh, with staking, you have a reduction in circulating supply, right? What this means is that when you stake, you are literally giving your ETH to a validator, right? Or you are running your own validator, which means you are no longer able to sell it as easily as you once were. Right now, there's some degree of lockup. I'll talk about that in a second. But in proof of stake systems like Solana, most of the Solana on the Solana network is staked and is earning those interest rewards, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, for Ethereum, only about 10% of ETH is staked because it's only the beacon chain. But once the merge happens, we expect a lot more ETH to get staked. And more ETH that's staked means less supply that can be sold. So again, it's that same dynamic. It's good for supply. Right. It ought to be good for price. The merge also has a few other benefits. It's just kind of good in general, right? Some other fun stuff is going to happen. ETH is going to start to get faster, not right now, but a little bit into the future. Proof of uh, the merge and kind of moving to proof of stake is an important milestone on the road to getting faster. From a general like kind of crypto morale standpoint, this is basically the only positive narrative we have right now in the bear market where everyone's shitting on crypto. It's nice to see like big technological upgrades can happen in a decentralized way. That's a big deal. Um, and if you're a gamer, as I know some people watching this will be, your gaming computers are probably going to get cheaper <laughs> because now demand for these compute these graphics cards is going to go down. So that's good. It'll be cheaper to play Fortnite or whatever the fuck people are playing these days. That's all the good stuff that's going to happen. Let me tell you about some stuff that's not going to happen. Uh, the first thing that's not going to happen is that ETH is not going to get noticeably faster. ETH is going to remain fairly slow because this change is happening just on the consensus layer, right? It's just the consensus mechanism that's changing not what's called the execution layer. You know, to have another metaphor into the mix, imagine ETH like a sandwich, right? You have like your bread, you have your meat, you have your lettuce, you have whatever else. We're just swapping out the meat. But all of the, this is already going to sound bad. I can tell that there's like a risk coming <laughs> because I'm saying this. Please continue. I want to know about the sandwich. This is like swapping out like ham for, I don't know, like prosciutto or something like that, right? Uh, but all the other stuff is staying the same for right now. And it turns out that it's actually like the lettuce and the onion that make the network faster, right? So we're just changing out one what about, layer. What about, the, the, what about the ketchup? Is that still going to be there? <laughs> <laughs> the ketchup will remain the same, uh, nice and uh, sweet as always. <laughs> all of that stuff, the ketchup, et cetera, will change though. That, that change is going to come up and it has the best name in the history of crypto. They call it Proto Dank Sharding. Nice. That's the actual official name for it. Michael. Like, cool. Dank yeah. Sharding. Yeah. Because it was proposed by the guy who was, who was named uh, Dankard Fried, right? Uh, ah, so that's yes, how the Dank, dank Sharding kind of came. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, second common misconception ETH is not going to get cheaper like to use. The fees are going to stay basically the actual same. And it's for that same reason as before, right? That sandwich metaphor, we're just changing out the, the meat layer. Everything else is actually what impacts the fees. Um, this has no change on kind of block space, right? And the final misconception to know is that if you have already staked to the beacon chain, you are not going to be able to unstake right away. 
If you go ahead and stake right now, your stuff is just locked probably for at least another six to nine months. And then even at that time, there's going to be a queue to unstake. So you can't just like do it on an instant notice. You'll say, oh, I want to unstake. And then it still might take a little bit more time after that. When do people actually get to unstake, right? So uh, that is going to be included in an update called Shanghai update, which is probably the next update that is going to come after the merge, right? And that's where this unstaking uh, part will be activated. Now, one thing to know here as well is that when ETH can get unstaked, that should have an impact on the market, or I would speculate that it does. Again, this is not financial advice. For the next six to nine months, all this ETH is getting staked and it's getting locked and you can't take it away. That means supply is less. Mm. In six to nine months, when you can unlock, all of that supply is going to come back onto the market. All of the staking rewards, all that interest that people have been earning on stake ETH is going to be available for them to sell. So it'll be interesting to see once this happens, what happens to the price when there's all this new selling pressure that doesn't exist mm. today uh, that we're merging so from a price six, perspective. Six to nine months in ETH standards means three to four years. <laughs> that is very possible. <laughs> <laughs>